Deathloop is a one-of-a-kind game that takes risks that can be hit or miss, but overall, it's undeniably enjoyable. And if you take the time out to explore and enjoy all that the game has to offer, you'll realize this is more than just a 1960s adaptation of Groundhog Day. I'm rewriting this. With the state of the world today, eons are only hope for the future. Join us and become an eternal. What's good everybody, long time no see, Pizzo back with another review for Deathloop now. In this video I'm going to be discussing the story leading up to the game, story aspects of the game itself, as well as the gameplay, and end it with my thoughts and score for the game. So if you have not already, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when the next videos go live, and smash that like button so we can get this video circulating through the YouTube algorithm. Now before we get into the thick of it, I have to let y'all know, spoiler warning, if you want to enjoy this game for a blind playthrough, or if you just don't want to be spoiled on the game itself make sure that you either watch the video game play through or buy the game yourself enjoy it then come back and talk to me now that that's out the way let's go ahead and get into it in 1932 a group called the army of the motherland stumbled across an island named black reef with a temporal anomaly within they sent a group called operation horizon to experiment on how the island's anomaly work and while there members say that they heard their own voices in the wind son of a i don't know any code yo hello what and even saw variants of themselves called visitors on the island. In 1938, after years of research, they came up with the idea to conduct an experiment called the Rakieto Plan, which was basically them launching a piloted rocket into the anomaly to see what would happen. They recruited a young pilot named Colt Vaughn, who despite his pregnant lover Lila Blake's wishes, goes along with the experiment. Once the anomaly's requirements are met, they executed the Rakieto Plan successfully. However, both Colt and the rocket disappeared into the time loop. With no proof of results, Horizon left the project in the island in seven 17 years passed before Colt actually found a way out of the loop. Once he makes it back to society, 17 years of the same day over and over again, and trying to explain the experience itself probably helped make a case for him to be considered insane, and he was thrown into an asylum for five years until the Eon program, headed by Igor Serling, got him out. Long ago, the Isle of Black Reef experienced a cataclysmic event which tore the fabric of space and time. We call this tear the Anomaly. I founded the Eon program with the visionaries to protect and study the etheric imbalances of this phenomenon. The Eon program is a group of hand-picked individuals wanting to escape the limitations of mortality by living through what they call the first day for eternity. While this program is full of followers called Eternalists, they're led by nine visionaries, including Colt. Each visionary has a unique personality and their own motivations for being on Black Reef, which brings us to the game's events where Colt decides to break the loop, and to do so, he must find a way to kill all nine visionaries. He has until the end of the day to do so, and if he's unsuccessful or he runs out of the two extra lives that comes with his personal slab, more on that later, the loop starts over again. For the sake of time, I'm going to focus on the final loop as much as possible. Here we go. The perfect loop starts with Harriet Morse, the only HR worse than Activision blizzards. She keeps a laundry list of dirt on the other visionaries just in case somebody want to try her, except for Fia's high self. Fia acts like she understands this whole great beyond, two-path divinity stuff. The great beyond. I have seen it. I don't buy it. But anyways, just know that Fia's high, Harriet's nuts, and the only moment she's exposed for a kill is during her morning sacrificial sermon. Yeah. Like I said, she's nuts. Next up, you have to make sure Ramblin' Frank Spicer's last show is the bomb, literally. Frank, the head recruiter of Eon, joined the program in hopes of relaunching his career and rejuvenating his voice, which had been severely damaged after his last tour, which involved 85 cities and 80 nights and way too many drugs. And of course, he was pissed when he found out that's not how the loop works. He enjoys the spotlight, and his obsession with flaring fireworks eventually leads to his demise that night. After preventing a fire, obtaining a code, and some invasive investigation, you find out the one thing that'll really Really set off his fireworks show during the Lexus's party that night. First time ever tried to do fireworks. I completely botched the flappy things. Speaking of Alexis's party, Igor Serling needs a reason to party like there's no tomorrow, but he can if he's so distracted with his experiment to contact the future. Even though he's a founder of Eon, his fear of insignificance is a driving force behind his desire to exploit the loop to make such a groundbreaking scientific discovery. Yeah, typical Igor. Stop and just shine in this book. He craves the acknowledgement from his fellow scientists like Dr. Wenji, who we'll talk about in a minute, and his irreplaceable desire to have respect put on his name leads to his success in other loops. But after doing some homework, you figure out he's found a way to put his ether slab on his equipment, making it invisible. Lucky for you, though, he keeps the one thing that would make it visible locked away in his nearby office. Once exposed, shut down the device that leads to his success, and he won't have a choice but to drink the pain away at Alexis's party that night. Speaking of an invitation that can't be refused, you're going to need one if you're going to get someone as antisocial and self-focused 
scientist Dr. Wendy Evans to come. As chief scientist and co-founder of Eon, she's done more than her fair share after creating the slabs, trinkets, and her residuum research leading to a means of retaining items through multiple loops. Wendy's original job was to create a system that would allow the program to harness the energy produced by Black Reef's anomaly, but her goal quickly shifted once she was visited by multiple variations of herself from different timelines. The only issue is that they go back to their respective timelines by the afternoon. She doesn't want that to happen, and she thinks the answer to prevent that lies beyond the horizon bunker found in the same area that Alexis's party is in, Updom. After some digging, you catch wind of something belonging to Alexis being delivered to the Updom library. Turns out it's a bobblehead with a very annoying recording that proves useful as 2-Bit, a machine fueled by Charlie Montague's brain, is able to use the voice recording to create a custom invitation that will automatically send to Winji every loop, and we know just what to say to her. Question mark? Anyways, while we're on the topic of Charlie, as Chief Systems Administrator and Head of Entertainment of Eon, he joined the program hoping to use the loop to refine his games. Described as a bit of a genius, yet a bit of a moron, Charlie's the most self-assured, insecure visionary of them all. He's won at least five Game of the Year awards and is responsible for all of the mini games, including Condition Detachment and Updom, where he usually is, until you find out he has a nerd's usual weakness. The highest visionary by far, Fia Zbroska? Fia's an artistic, self-centered psychopath who sees most things through the lens of how it can be exploited for her art. How she was deemed fit to be principal visual artist and chief provisioner for Eon is completely beyond me. You can find her in Freestead Rock all day, and after looking into this little situation ship, you find out they got a little sneaky link in an old bunker on the outskirts of Freestead Rock. Charlie made a special lock for this meetup area, and the code is a sequence of Fia's art. All there is to do is to crack the code and hit two lovebirds with one stone. Lastly, it's time to crash Alexis's devouring of the lambs party. And yes, he's as weird as his party sounds. As the chief financial backer and co-founder of Eon, Alexis Dorsey is an egomaniac who wants to be the person that everyone wants to spend time, sleep, and party with, minus Harriet, and honestly, I don't blame him. Bit of a nutcase there. Anyways, he views his own ruthless determination as the reason for his success and has no regard for the sanctity of anyone's life except his own, much like that of the wolf iconography he seems to be obsessed with. After Frank's final tune, you knock off Igor, Wingy, and Alexis with the seven dead visionaries required to power the rocket involved in the Raketo plan. Colt can now get to the stabilizer core where you can finally confront who I like to call she who remains, Juliana Blake. Yes, Blake, as in Colt's previously mentioned pregnant lover. Seems as though 17 years turned Colt into a father that never came back from the store, except the store was a literal time prison in which he had no clue how to escape. Since Colt's change of heart, she's had to take on the role of archivist and new head of security and strongly believes in the loop's potential and exercises it to her own amusement with little regard to the rest of the visionaries or eternalists unless the loop is threatened. She's been murdered by Colt continuously and increasingly violently in his attempt to break the cycle to which she started fighting back and one day she learned to like this little cat and mouse hunt they had going while initially being the hunted juliana grew to be the hunter by inventing her own special memory storage technique she named compressing allowing her to retain memories throughout loops now there are three endings to this game you either kill her then kill yourself the final visionary to break the loop you can kill her and choose to remain in the loop to do it all over again or you don't pull the trigger and you develop some sort of strange murderous father-daughter relationship gameplay is straightforward. You have four locations, which are the Complex, Updom, Carl's Bay, and Freestad Rock, and four times of the day to visit those locations, which are morning, noon, afternoon, and evening. Each location changes as the time of day changes, such as different enemies, different weapons, different minigames, and different lore opportunities. Colt uses the tunnels as his base of operations to manage visionary leads that progress the story and help you figure out each visionary's agenda and how to get them at the best possible moment to take them down in one day. You also collect discoveries and documents which are the lore opportunities presented throughout the game that help you get a feel for each visionary and their relationship to each other as well as their relationship to cult through notes, cassette recordings, minicom logs, which are just email messages, and Eon profiles or their initial interviews to make it to the island. What's my favorite book, song, or play? What about games, Juliana? Games are art, and the best games are my games. So my games, obviously. Colt's discoveries focus more on the different changes he notices in each area in each time of day and the side challenges that present themselves. You have to manage all of this while She Who Remains tries to kill you multiple times in each loop. Juliana's effectiveness as a main antagonist comes from how stressful a simple smash and grab can be once the game tells you she's hunting you. Okay. 
Oh, shit. Before you go in any area, you get to choose your loadout and decide on which leads you want to chase. The weapons in the game lack variety, in my opinion. There are four classes of guns. Pistols, SMGs, shotguns, and ranged weapons. They try to make up for the lack of weapon types by adding traits and trinkets. For example, I like running an SMG that recovers health as I do damage, and I throw on a trinket that speeds reload time, reduces hit fire, and recoil. And with that, I'm ready for just about any sticky situation. I also have a nail gun for sneaking around. It makes no noise, deals dot damage, and on top of that, I've added trinkets that increase accuracy, decrease ADS time, and slows down shot enemies' health regeneration. You also have character trinkets that do things like boost your health or power levels, decrease incoming damage, lets you double jump or sprint faster than normal, which all have their uses depending on your playstyle. Bad part is, with each loop, these guns, trinkets, and slabs are lost at the beginning of each loop unless you collect enough residual to infuse the items you want to keep in the next loop. Where the game excels for me, though, are the arsenal leads. These focus on killing each visionary and taking their signature weapon or slab, or if you already have their slab infused, and gaining slab upgrades. These slabs make any playstyle much more enjoyable as you customize your game playstyle around these, whether you like being loud and proud or if playing stealthy is healthy. There's plenty fun to be had either way. Lastly, the game offers multiplayer by allowing real people to play as Juliana and put fear in people's hearts that are trying to progress the story. While playing as Juliana, instead of killing Eternalists and Visionaries, you earn trinkets, slabs, weapons, and outfits by upgrading your hunter level. How do you do that, you ask? By killing cults over and over and over and in summary, Deathloop is a very unique experience with some game choices that work and some that don't. The story in and of itself will be stale if you don't take the time out to read transcripts, notes, and other lore-based items. And on top of that, some of these are harder to find than others. Plus, the game has a system that changes codes for anybody's game session. So the lock to that door with a code that you want to crack is not as simple as Googling the combination to that code and going about your day. You actually have to find the note that reveals the code. Outside of that, I would have liked to see more cutscenes or maybe in-game sequences as opposed to radio chat and recordings as character development. This is the main reason why only Juliana worked for me as a villain. Remember saying, with the state of the world today, eons are only hope for the future. Proof for it never happened. With the state of the world today, eons are only hope for the future. Who are you going to be today, Colt? Is there anyone left you haven't turned on? Wait, I turn you on? I turn you off. Hey, yo. Gameplay wise though, there's definitely a lot of enjoyment to be had. The different environment variations, loadout customizations, and multiplayer aspect definitely made this game more enjoyable for me. All in all, I'm gonna give this game a seven out of 10. I had fun with this game, but the replay value burns out quickly after beating the game. Let me know what you all think of my analysis of this game. What were your thoughts playing the game if you've played it already and are you still enjoying the game? If you haven't played the game and still watch past the spoiler warning, did this help you get a better grasp on the game? And would you be willing to play the game knowing what you know now? Let me know in the comments down below thank you again for checking out this video and if you made it to this point of the video go ahead and enjoy the discord down in the description we'd love to have you as part of the community again i'm pizzo plays and i'll see y'all soon